Hi, I'm Dimple Teresa and I work at the Centre for Women's Development Studies in Delhi. I'm at this conference uh, to present my paper uh, on women's collectives. Women collectives who are involved in farming uh, on leased in lands. Now, when you look at leased in lands, it means it's borrowed lands. It is not something you own. You have no ownership. You are not the owner. You lease in land for a period of time at whatever ne uh, negotiated or agreed upon lease rates. So some of the time, the lease rate may be a share of the produce or, or a share of the harvest. At other times, in fact, that is the most common uh, lease agreement in India, which is called uh, sharecropping, which is called sharecropping. And commonly in India, Bihar is one of the states uh, which have largest number of sharecroppers, where 50% is on an average the uh, agreement uh, to, uh, with the landowner and the, uh, the, and the sharecropper. Now, my study is uh, from Kerala and on the groups of women, uh, groups which are ranging from four to five members who have leased in lands uh, all across the state. There are more than 65,000 women groups now in Kerala uh, of this uh, size who have been leasing in land for the last five, six years. And they've been supported by this program called Kudumbasri. Now, Kudumbasri is a poverty er eradication program that the Kerala government has supported and nurtured over now 17, 18 years, since 1998. And uh, it is in 2004 they started with this land, uh, recognizing that a lot of land was being left fallow and uh, this could be utilized because land is an asset as well as a productive resource which has to be utilized and uh, if the landowner doesn't want to cultivate it, why not give it on lease to somebody who is interested. And therefore Kudumbasri uh, supported this program, asked uh, the women to, you know, if they were interested and number of groups are cultivating. So the major crops grown are paddy, banana, uh, vegetables, these are the major crops and then there are certain regions like Ernakulam district which have large number of pineapple farmers. So my study was looking at the economic returns, what the women were earning from this uh, cultivation and I looked at both paddy farmers as well as pineapple farmers and the overall uh, income that the women generated was much higher in pineapple in spite of the lease uh, terms being substantially high if you look at what were their background because most of them were landless many of them had uh, their husbands or their uh, fathers in uh, informal jobs like they were drivers or they were painters or plumbers and these women earlier were some of them were working as agriculture workers but they weren't getting enough of jobs anymore because Kerala being uh, was earlier an agrarian uh, economy but over time it has shifted out and most of the households, rural households who have land just do not cultivate it because they have gone into non-farm occupation. Many people have also uh, gone in for, um, uh, you know, migrated out to either to the US or uh, to the Middle East so they have their land here which is left uncultivated. So that is why there is the land that is available and the women from lower income strata who are able to lease in. And this is a great initiative and it has been, in my opinion, I think a kind of a success because Kudumbasri also made available a lot of support in the sense that the women were given agriculture loans at 7% interest rate uh, in which the state subsidized uh, some of the interest uh, that was like they gave a subsidy of 5% meaning just at 2% rates they were able to get the agriculture loans and 
they also gave a lot of marketing support. To market their produce, that was a huge uh, uh, initiative. And the most important initiative was the, uh, the there was a community-based uh, structure. That is, you must have heard about the self-help group concept, the self-help groups of women. So Kudumbasri also grew that uh, network of women. Uh, you know, so 50% of the households in rural Kerala are members of Kudumbasri network. So that itself was a huge uh, support. So these have led to women entering into farming and uh, gaining such a huge uh, uh, foothold and recognition as farmers in the state of Kerala, which earlier they, many of them were just agriculture laborers. You know? And so there's also a lot of pride in the women uh, in the fact that they're now cultivators, they're actually farmers, and not just working on somebody's land, so even though they have just leased in the land, they feel the pride in them is so much more than just being a laborer working on someone else's farm. So they're taking, so what, what is happening now is from wage laborers, they're becoming self-employed to work on a, a piece of land. It is, it is an agriculture enterprise they're basically running. They have to uh, make sure they get the credit, they get the inputs, everything in time, they get the water, and they have to grow the crop and they have to finally market the crop at whatever is the price that is. Because pineapple crop has, you know, the price fluctuates according to the market prices. So it may fluctuate anything from 12 to 36 or 40 rupees. So you have to coincide your harvest with the time when the prices are high. So all these risks they are taking, which they didn't have to take as wage laborers, but now since they don't have that option of wage laborer, you know, they, they don't have enough of opportunity to work as agriculture laborers. This is opening up an avenue for earning an income to support their households. So I think it's a great initiative. And, and though Kerala has a different context, it is kind of, it can work out in other parts of India and other parts of the world where you know, you can develop these type of initiatives. Thank you. <laughs>